Fluffy Mind by Echo Rainstorm on AO3. Episode 2, Chapter 2, New Start. Inko scrolled down the charming streets, the rhythmic squeak of Izuku's stroller accompanying her every step. Her eyes wandered across the tended lawns and lovely gardens adorning the houses. The neighborhood extruded an aura of prosperity, each house a testament to luxury and taste. Colorful gardens adorned with vibrant flowers, while manicured lawns stretched like emerald carpets under the sun's gentle rays. Her gaze lingered on a particularly striking house, with two stories. Instead of the usual green expanses, its front yard was an artistic arrangement of smooth rocks and pebbles, a minimalist, yet eye-catching choice that set it apart from its neighbors. The metal gate, an intricate mesh of iron, added a touch of wealth and exclusivity. Four months had passed since Inko's arrival to this neighborhood. The once petrifying nights had given way to a new found sense of calm. The faintest of ruffles of leaves or distant chirps of birds no longer set her heart racing, a testament to the resilience she had cultivated. As she scrolled, thoughts of the two spare rooms in her home danced in her mind. One envisioned as a playroom for Izuku, adorned with colorful toys and educational wonders to nurture his curious spirit. The other, a cozy guest room, though currently unoccupied, held the promise of hostility for the future companionship, a silent invitation for friendship and warmth yet to bloom. Although the only people she knew happened to be officers Ito and Tsukuichi, maybe she could become friends with them. I'm so lonely if I'm considering befriending police officers. Wow, I really need a social life. In the midst of her musings, Inko's attention was drawn to a figure on the sidewalk. A woman with spiky blonde hair, accompanied by a stroller matching like her own. Inko supposes this is about time she take a hold of her life again. Hey, I'm new to the neighborhood. Well, sort of. I've been here for a short while, but I'm Ken... Midoriya. Inko, Midoriya. Sorry, I'm so used to my hus ex-husband's last name. Inko initiated the conversation. Uh, welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Nitsuki Bakugo. I'm sorry uh, about your ex. She reciprocated with a warm greeting, her demeanor a mix of curiosity and empathy. Don't be. I'm happy to get rid of him. He was a not-so-great man. Just say he was a bitch. Oh, my, no. No, what did he do? Cheat? You would see me on the news if my husband cheated, that's for sure. Inko's laughter bubbled forth at Mitsuki's blunt remark. A brief moment of lightness amidst the weight of a past struggle. Their banter evolved into a casual scroll towards Mitsuki's home. The White House, with the imposing gate looming ahead. The richest house in the neighborhood. As they approached the house, Inko couldn't help but admire its architectural elegance. The gate, a masterpiece of craftsmanship, inviting yet guarded, a perfect reflection of Mitsuki's spirit, yet protective nature. Inside, the decor was a harmonious blend of modern chic and cozy comfort. Plush furnishes invited relaxation, while tasteful decorations added personality and charm to each corner. The air carried hints of freshly cut lavender. In the tranquil moment of the morning, Inko's gaze drifted towards the sleeping forms of Izuku and Katsuki, nestled in their peaceful slumber. Katsuki, a mere image of his mother. Little shithead didn't let me sleep a wink. Mitsuki's playful grumble broke the quainty as she poured herself a cup of coffee. Inko chuckled softly. My little Izuku sleeps too much. I'm starting to get worried. Well, you're lucky. I wish my little demon would just shut his fucking eyes. Mitsuki's sharp retort 
it lighted another round of laughter from Inko. Anyways, enough about that. How's the job hunt? It's going. So, no luck? No hospital is hiring. I have some connections if you need some help. Oh, no, you don't need... Please, I will gladly do it. In fact, I'll take care of little Izuka when you work. Mitsuki's offer of assistance brought a soft smile to Inko's lips. The gesture spoke volumes of the bond that they had formed over the past eight months. Inko's expression softened as she nodded, accepting Mitsuki's offer with gratitude. The prospect of having someone trustworthy to care for Izuku during her work hours eased a weight off her shoulders, a testament to the value of true friendships in times of need. The simple joy of having someone to talk to, it was a relief to share baby photos of Inko and her job search, the haunting nightmares that plagued her nights. Having just two friends might seem unusual to some, especially considering one was a police officer. But for Inko, their friendship was a lifeline, a source of understanding and companionship that transceded any judgment from outsiders. Tsukuichi's unwavering support and understanding was like a beacon of light in Inko's life. Even though Ito, due to his busy schedule, wasn't as present, Tsukuichi filled that void with his genuine friendship. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day. Inko couldn't help but feel grateful for having Tsukuichi by her side. His presence brought a sense of ease and comfort, like a steady anchor amidst a turbulent sea. She cherished their conversations. Tsukuichi. Guess who is officially a police officer? Inko. You? Tsukuichi. Yeah, one step closer. Inko. I'm sure you will make detective in a year. Tsukuichi. I wish. It's more likely to take me six years. Unless I get a golden ticket, it's not happening. Inko. Not with that attitude. Inko's finger stiffly peeled the potato, the rhythmic sound of the knife against the skin, a smooth melody. Cooking had always been her refuge, a sanctuary where the complexities of life melted away, leaving behind only the simplicity of creating something delicious. It was a skill she had honed over the years, not just for the joy of cooking, but also for the solace it brought. As she focuses on the task at hand, memories of Hisashi's resurface. Memories of how a well-cooked meal could ease the tension of a rough day. But now, with Hisashi gone, cooking held a different meaning. It wasn't just about calming someone else. It was about nourishing herself, both body and soul. She set the potato aside, wiping her hands on the kitchen towel before heading to answer the door. Namoyasa, she explained, with genuine surprise and delight, stepping aside to let him in. His unexpected presence brought a wave of warmth and happiness. Surprise. Ingo ushered him to the living room where they sat. What are you doing here? I moved into town. Where is Izuku? He's in his... You moved? Yeah. Tsukuichi rubbed at his neck. What? She couldn't contain her joy, enveloping him in a tight hug. Wait, why? I got a golden ticket, and, well, the only available spot for detective was here. Oh my god, that's amazing! See, I told you you would make detective in a year. It's been two... Suguichi laughed. Their conversation was interrupted by a meow from the hallway, and Inko's heart swelled with affection as Izuku, in his playful green fluffy cat form, made his presence known. Izuku's eyes widened with curiosity as he spotted Tsukuichi, transforming from his feline form to his human self. Mommy, who is this? He inquired, his head tilting slightly to the side. 
Ingo smiled down at him. He's a friend of Mommy's. Intrigued, Izuku approached Suguichi. What do you think of All Might? Izuku whispered. Suguichi crouched down to Izuku's level, his expression thoughtful yet kind. I think he's a great hero. He responded warmly. Izuku's face lit up with delight, a bright smile spriting across his features. I like him, Mommy, he declared. With that, he bounced off once again. Wish to stay for dinner? Ingo asked. Yes. Brat! Izuku is here! Mitsuki's voice echoed through the house as Izuku and Ingo entered. Izuku darted towards Katsuki's room. So, Ingo, spill the tea about the hot cop. Mitsuki plops onto the plush couch. Ingo follows suit. Don't call him hot cop. He's a detective. Inka corrected, settling besides Mitsuki. Okay, hot detective. Mitsuki teased with a playful wink. I have Izuku and my work. I'm not looking for a relationship. Inka stated firmly. But if you were looking, Mitsuki prodded, leaning in with curiosity. Mitsuki! Inko's cheeks were tinted pink as she avoided Mitsuki's gaze. I'm not. Mitsuki rolled her eyes. Inko, darling, imagine it. He's hot, you're hot, and both single. Well, I mean, he's not unattractive. Inko admitted, her gaze flicking away. So, you would consider dating him? Well... Wait, do you hear that? Inko interrupted, her attention drawn to the hallway. Hear what? I don't hear... Fuck. Both women sprinted towards the kids' room. Seated amongst a colorful array of markers were Izuku and Katsuki, their faces a canvas of mischief and creativity. Izuku's features contorted into a playful smile his eyes sparking with excitement as he proudly displays a bold number two in vibrant red on his forehead. Besides him, Katsuki mirrors the expression, his own number two standing in on striking green against his fair skin. Hi, Mom! Izuka's voice rang out innocently. Inko's heart swelled with a mix of exasperation and affection as she took in the scene. Despite the chaos of marker-stained faces, there was a warmth that enveloped her. Izuku and Katsuki lay sprayed on the lush grass, their faces fixed on the skies where fluffy clouds danced like cotton candy. The sun painted streaks of gold across the horizon, creating a warm glow over the twinkled scene. Izuku's finger shot up pointing at a cloud drifting lazily above. That's a bunny, Izuku explained with childlike wonder, his eyes alight with imagination. Katsuki snorted, his lips curling into a playful smirk. No, furball, that's a sunflower. Izuku shook his head, his messy green hair, trostled by the gentle breeze. No, that's the cloud next to the bunny. Look over there. Katsuki followed Izuku's gaze. Their laughter echoed through the quiet afternoon as they continued to point out different shapes in the sky. Some clouds resembled airplanes soaring through the unknown destinations, while others form intricate hearts that seem to pulse with a silent rhythm. One particularly unique cloud resembled a hand, its fingers stretched towards the heavens. For a ball. Katsuki called out. Yes, Kachan? Izuku turned towards his friend, a smile playing on his lips. Be my sidekick, Katsuki declared. Izuku's expression turned thoughtful as he propped himself up on his elbows. Mm, no. Katsuki arched an eyebrow. Why not? Because I will be your partner. We will be a hero duo, Kachan, Izuku said. The words hung in the air till 
Nah, be my sidekick. Kachan, no! Natsuki was scrubbing his hands in the restroom, the sound of water splashing echoing in the quiet space. Suddenly, a distant commotion caught his attention, drawing him out of the restroom. As he stepped into the hallway, his gaze fell upon a scene that made his blood boil. There, on the floor, surrounded by a group of kids, was Izuku. Tears streaked down his cheeks, his usual bright green eyes dulled with distress. His ears and tail were being pulled and tugged. Hey! Katsuki's voice thundered through the air as he charged through the group, his protective instincts overriding any rational thought. With a swift motion, he pushed the kid, pinning Izuku down, his eyes blazing with fury. Bakugo, chill, we were just showing your pet the ru- Before the kid could finish, Katsuki's fist connected with his cheek. The impact reverberated through the hallway. The scene erupted into chaos as Katsuki unleashed his pent-up frustration, pulling, punching, kicking the other kids who had dared harm his friend. Get off of Furball, he roared. The children, now crying and terrified, scattered like leaves in a storm. Katsuki's chest heaved, his hands trembling with the adrenaline-fueled energy. He turned toward Izuku, who still lay on the ground, tears coming to trickle down his cheeks. Kachan. Izuku's voice quivered, his gaze locked onto Katsuki's hand. A faint glow of small sparks danced around Katsuki's fingertips. My quirk. Katsuki's eyes widened. Izuku's teal-filled eyes met Katsuki's. Kachan, your quirk! Thank you for coming. I just don't know what to do. Inko's voice quivered as Sukuichi entered the room. He came home with a m- I don't know how to help my baby. Inko sobbed. Sukuichi enveloped her in a hug. Hey, hey, it's okay. We can see what we can do. I'm sure we can get the school to take some action against the kids who did this. He reassured her with a gentle tone. Inko glanced towards Izuku's room her heart aching for her son's pain. Tsukuichi walked over and knocked on Izuku's door. Hey, bud, it's Namoyasa. Gonna come in. Tsukuichi's voice was soft, filled with concern. Mm-hmm, came Izuku's subdued reply from inside. As Tsukuichi entered, his eyes fell upon Izuku, huddled in the corner, his arms wrapped tightly around himself. Hey, buddy, I heard what happened. Tsukuichi spoke gently, kneeling down to Izuku's level. Am I a freak? Izuku's voice trembled, his eyes casted down towards the floor. What? No, you're not. Those kids don't know. It wasn't the kids. Izuku interrupted, his voice barely above a whisper. Tsukuichi's expression darkened as anger simmered beneath the surface. Who was it? My teacher. She said I was a freak. I don't want to be a freak. I want to be normal. Izuku's words were filled with pain and confusion. At that moment, Inko burst into the room, rushing to her son's side and pulling him into a tight embrace. Oh, my sweet boy, you are perfect. I would not change a thing about you, my baby. She whispered, her voice croaked with emotion. Sukuichi clenched his jaw, his resolved firm. Don't worry, Inko. I won't let them get away with this. He vowed, determination blazing in his eyes as he reached for his phone. You're like me, Izuku remarked, his eyes wide with curiosity, as he looked at Tsukuichi's partner, Tamakawa. And you're like me, Tamakawa replied with a warm smile. 
Izuku stared in amazement. His gaze fixed on Tamakawa's feline head. I like you, he said earnestly. My name is Sansa Tamakawa, and I am Sukuichi's partner. Tamakawa introduced himself. Oh, do you live together? Izuku tilted his head to the side. No, why would we? Tamakawa also tilted his head. When two people love each other, they live together and get rings, Izuku explained matter-of-factly. Tamakawa chuckled softly. He's my work partner, not my romantic partner. We work together, he clarified. Izuku's eyes lit up at that. I have a work partner. You have a job? No, but I will. I want to be a hero, and I'm going to work with Kachan. That's wonderful. At that moment, Sukuichi walked in. All right, Izuku, are you ready? He asked. Izuku nodded. So, you said that your teacher did something the other day, right? Izuku nodded. Oh, Izuku, I need you to... Sukuichi began, but Izuku interrupted. Right, because then your clerk doesn't work. Well, um, yeah, he was really mean that day, more than normal, Izuku explained, his words tumbling out in a rush. Sukuichi and Tamagawa exchanged a knowing look. So, your teacher is normally mean? Tamagawa inquired gently. Yeah, but only to me. He doesn't like freaks like me. Izuku admitted, his gaze dropping to the floor. Okay, that's good. That's all we need, Izuku. You did a great job. Go ahead and ask all the questions you want to Samasa. Tsukuichi encouraged, getting up to leave the room. Yay! Izuku's whole demeanor changed as he sat up straighter in his chair and pulled out his notebook. Okay, so, do you purr? I can purr. Are you lactose intolerant? I am. Do you hate water? Do you like being warm? Do you have claws? Do you sleep a lot? Do you like fish? Do you forget to drink water? Do you eat a lot too? Do you hiss? Do you like catnip? Do you have toe beans? Do you like watching people? Do you like to watch animals? Do you like lay out in the sun? I know I love to. Do you have better hearing and smelling? Does your quirk help you with your job? Uh, all great questions. Can you repeat that? Tamawaka chuckled, slightly overwhelmed by Izuku's rapid-fire questions. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, my mommy says I could get ahead of myself. Izuku apologized cheaply. As Izuku ran up to Katsuki, the forest echoed with the ruffle of leaves and the distant chirping of birds. Forward marching, here we go. Members of the agency, Baku. Katsuki's singing was interrupted after he fell from a log, after confidently marching over it like a bridge. Kachan! Izuku called out, his voice filled with concern. Katsuki glanced up from where he sat on the ground. His expression, a mix of irritation and amusement at his own clumsiness. Are you okay? Izuku's worried was evident in his eyes as he offered his hand to help Katsuki up. Katsuki's lips curled into a smirk as he grasped Izuku's hands firmly. Yeah, furball, he replied, his tone a blend of gruffiness and affection. With Izuku's support, Katsuki pulled himself up dusting off his pants with a flick of his hand. The sunlight filtered through the trees, casting dappled patterns onto the forest floor as the two boys stood together. Izuku chuckled, the tension dissipating as they resumed their walk through the woods, their banter and laughter filling the air. The room was filled with giggles as Inko and Namayasa sat together, sipping their coffee and enjoying a rare moment of relaxation. Inko's gaze wandered over to where Izuku and Katsuki were engrossed in a drawing on the floor, their animated conversation blending with the background sounds of an All Might movie. 
So, Inka, Namayasa's voice pulled her attention back to the conversation. Yes? Inka turned to face him. I was thinking there's this new restaurant that opened up on the corner of uh, First Street. Namayasa mentioned, a hint of excitement in his voice. Inko's heart skipped a beat as she processed his words. Are you asking me out? She asked, surprised. Yeah, Namayasa confirmed with a warm smile. Inko's thoughts drifted momentarily to Izuku's joyful antics. I don't... I mean, you're amazing. But Inko and then Sashi, I'm not sure I can tr trust enough. I just... Let me think about it. She replied honestly, hesitation evident in her voice. Amayasa nodded, understandably respecting Inko's need for time and space. Of course, take your time. I'm here whenever you're ready. He reassured her, his tone gentle and supportive. Inko, I love you. I do. But it's been years. I'm sure your ex will rot in hell. I think it's time you moved on. Mitsuki's comforting words were accompanied by a gentle rub on Inko's shoulder as she hugged her friend tightly. I'm just scared that... I don't want to make the same mistake, Inko admitted, leaning into Mitsuki's embrace. This Tsukuichi seems to be a great man, and if he hurt you even once, know that you're not alone. I'm here, and I will beat up a detective for you, Mitsuki declared fiercely. Just then, Katsuki and Izuku burst into the room, their laughter and energy filling the space. Inko reached for a phone. Right, I can't live in the past. She muttered to herself as she quickly typed out a message. Inko. Hey. Namoyasa. Hey. Inko. Okay. Namoyasa. Okay? Inko, does Friday work for you? Namayasa, what? Oh, yeah. Wait, no. How about Saturday? Inko, it's a date. Come on, Izuka says as they both run to the park bench. Coming. As Izuku and Katsuki eagerly show off their hero cards, Inko couldn't help but smile, just as they were eagerly trying to rip the packaging off, unsuccessfully. Namayasa joined them and helped them open it. What did you two get? Inko asked with genuine instrument as Namayasa settled beside her. We got hero cards, Izuku explained proudly, displaying his card, still in the wrapping. Excitement filled the air as they opened their packages simultaneously, revealing their respective hero card. Look! They both exclaimed in Look! unison, showcasing their cards to each other. It's a sign! Izuku exclaimed, his eyes shining with hope. We're going to be the number one together! Katsuki declared, a grin spreading across his face. Inko laughed at their antics. Her heart warmed. Mitsuki. Getting in the car. Gonna be there soon. Tell the brat to get ready. Inko. Drive safe. As Inko was about to put her phone away. Until she noticed another notification. An urgent news article. Infamous villain Viper escapes from prison last night. The cheerful atmosphere instantly shifted. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.